he uh, rented out this Hayward house for a week. So this is now in the National Register of all the places where George Washington stayed before he died. George. But if y'all uh, ever read that registry, you'll find there are more days than he was alive. So you're gonna kind of take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> What you might have noticed, a lot of these larger homes, you have the smaller buildings set up back behind them or off the side there. What are mainly garages, apartments now? Okay, go down there, George. What have been these old outbuildings? Things like carriage houses, kitchen houses, or servants' quarters. Um, and of the old outbuildings, kitchen houses did actually become the most predominant. Uh, it was after the Great Fire of 1861. That fire burned from river to river across the entire peninsula. One of these outbuildings back here. Uh, it's showing about 575 buildings, which was just about a third of the city at that time. And it started as a cooking fire by one of the piers and spread straight across the city. It was not related to the war. So afterwards, City Day, uh, they suggested that everyone have a separate kitchen house and they try to reduce that risk. Uh, the problem with having a separate kitchen house is now you know your servants. They had to carry those huge supplies of food in for every meal. And some of the owners, they started getting nervous. They thought their servants might be sneaking food while they carried it in. Now I saw the other different fire marker over here right there. If anybody's feeling ambitious to walk around town and they try to find all 13 different fire markers. <laughs> well, they thought they might be sneaking food. Then they even start whistling while they carried in that food. <laughs> Y'all give it a shot. It's pretty hard to eat and whistle at the same time. They can't spit food everywhere. <laughs> so that, um, that distance from your kitchen house, your main house, that became known as the Whistler's Walk. Huh. But that whistling, uh, it's pretty new for the servants. And now they're outside, they carry those huge plaids of food, and they're whistling. So what's going to happen? Every dog in the neighborhood is going to get that food from them. The servants, they came up with a solution. They started deep frying these little balls of cornmeal, keeping them in their pockets. When the dogs were running up, they got a ball of cornmeal. Like hush puppies. Hush puppies. Now, if you guys ever had a hush puppy in a restaurant, that's where those came from. Hush puppies. And I know it does sound a little bit like I made that up. I did not. That was on Jeopardy one time. So, you have to keep in mind now whenever you have a hush puppy, you're actually having high quality dog food. <laughs> <laughs> they are really good, though. Like a lot. Don't let's stop trying to blame you here, too. <laughs> 